Hey, this is Willie Michael coming at you, and um, this week I'm really excited to share with you the basics of Christianity, so that way you can have a closer relationship with God using my own experiences as I was a man that did not have God and didn't even know how to develop a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. There's many things that we need to understand. For example, what is the Trinity? How does God the Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit work together? What does it mean to go to church? What does it mean to be part of ministry? And what does it mean in my life to do the little things to change the things that I currently do that I know that God isn't very happy with to become a better man or a better woman who's a true believer in Jesus Christ. thing we're going to start off with is prayer. Prayer is important. How many of you, when you want to communicate to a family or friend, pick up the telephone and make a phone call? How many of you get email or send email and you put a message in that? But when you make the phone call and when you send the email or create the email, you first of all have to put a telephone number and you have to put an email address. Well, why is that important? Well, there's systems that make the phone work, and there's systems that make the email work. When you put in a telephone number, it actually identifies who that person is, what part of the country they live or world. And when you enter those systems, it goes into an exchange, and when it goes through that ex exchange, it ensures that successful communication of that telephone phone call happens, whether that pick, person picks it up or goes to a voicemail message. So there's protocols to making a telephone call. Same thing with email. You put in an email address. And on that email address, it first of all says, you know, what's your name or your username or whatever. Then there's that at sign. And then there's what they call the domain name, meaning where that message needs to be sent on the server that it needs to go to, so it originally starts with me here and will eventually get to you there. There's these protocols, and that's called TCPIP. We won't get into that. But in order for successful communication to a friend or family member or coworker to happen, these protocols need to be put into place. It's the way the world works. There's certain rules and orders to successful transmission, creation, whatever it may be. Well, using those same principles, that's how prayer works. Now, there's God the Almighty Father who created the heavens and the earth, who's a spirit. And then there's Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus and God Father and Son have had a relationship. They've been in existence from the very beginning, even before the creation of time as we know it. And the Holy Spirit, they are together as one. They have a relationship as one. God sent Jesus to this planet as a man, similar to you and I, to show us a better way to live our lives. Now, Jesus told us we have not been able as man and women to have a relationship with God. We've, before he came, we were crazy, screwing everything up. But he came to show us a better way and to show us that he was real and what it means to have a relationship with the Father as he was going to have a relationship with us, which he did. So he created his life to be a reflection of how that relationship with God needs to be. So when we pray, it's important to pray to God, but it's also important to realize that Jesus is God, and to pray to God the Almighty Father, we need to go through Jesus Christ in our beliefs. 
What does that look like? Well, first of all, it's hard when you have a brand new relationship with God to pray to Him. I mean, my gosh, you realize, wow, He created everything, and I lived this life as a sinner. And, oh my gosh, I know He's forgiven me, but I don't know. It's going to be tough. But we have to realize that when we come to God, our Father, we're often like little infants. And little infants don't know how to talk. But it's also important to realize that, yes, he's God, but he's our Father. When you talk to your dad, if your dad's still with us, or someone that's a fatherly figure, do you constantly go, Dad, I need the keys to the car, and Dad, I need to go to the refrigerator to get something to drink because I'm thirsty, and Dad, I need you to help me with my schoolwork, and Dad, well, many of us pray that way. Father God, Father God, every other word, Father God. You're communicating, and you need to realize you're communicating to your Father that created everything. I mean, my God, we are sons and daughters of a king. And when we pray to God, we must pray to him as if we are speaking to our Father. He is our Father. But realizing that he knows everything that we need before we even realize that we need it, but we need to come to him with simplicity of prayer. It's important that when we start praying that many times our lives aren't exactly the way we know God wants them to be or our Father wants them to be, and it's going to take a lot of work. Well, that's where our prayer work starts. Our prayer work must begin with us. Father, and again, recognizing Jesus, Jesus, help me. Help me to live a better life. I don't know how to pray to you. Help me to fix these things I know are broken, but I just don't know how to fix. But when we say that prayer, realizing that God will bring people into our lives to help us. We can't do this by ourselves, and we can't be isolated from the outside world without realizing that we can't do this by ourselves. But most importantly, God wants us to serve others. That's what this is all about, is going out in the world and serving. So if your problems are really bad, well, get involved in the ministry. Get involved in helping to feed the homeless. Get involved with helping the poor. Because blessed are those that help the widows. Blessed are those that help the poor. And blessed are those that really are people that go out there in the world and feed the hungry or whatever. So get involved. Because when you get involved in ministries like that, you realize just how blessed your life really is. And if you don't know how to get involved or what that ministry should look like, again, God, my life is really screwed up. I need your help. Help me to fix these things. Help me to pray to you in a way that is honorable and respectable. But bring into my life ministries or places that I can go and I can help and serve. And when you start your prayer like that, your prayer life, God will start taking control and will start helping you because now you're asking him for help before in that other life. You weren't asking him at all. But prayer isn't about you and I. Prayer is about giving to others in prayer to help others. You've heard me say, and if you haven't heard me say, go watch my videos, is that we must die when we come to Jesus at the cross. We must bear our cross and we must go through the difficult aspects of our lives as we have new life in Christ. But when we do so, we give ourselves basically death to die to ourselves. Where We're now living a new life in Jesus. Well, that new life doesn't have to worry about yourself anymore because your Father's God. He's going to provide everything to you. But rather now, how can I help others? How can I pray for others? Because God will give us overflow of how we give and that's amazing so prayer starts with little communications to god in the morning thank you god for waking me up when i go to bed thank you god for this day may i have another day today but using what we've talked about here and ways to communicate to god and praying at the conclusion of the prayer in the name of our lord jesus christ to ensure successful transmission of that prayer as we pray to God right now, Lord, help these words that I'm giving to you create a better prayer life for ourselves and for the world as we pray these things in your name. Amen. And I'll come at you tomorrow with some more common sense. Peace.